Hello, my name is Chris Field and I'm the Library Services Specialist for Technology at Medicine Hat College. Part of my responsibilities in the library involves managing our social media accounts. So currently the library is signed up on Facebook, Twitter, we have a Flickr account, a blog, and starting in September 2012 we will also be on Foursquare. Since I manage the library's social networks, I'm always on the lookout for the next big thing in social media. And one thing I've been reading about a lot lately has been t uh, Pinterest. And it certainly has gotten too big to ignore. And that is the topic of today's presentation. Today, I'm going to be talking about Pinterest. In particular, uh, first I'm going to give some background information about the shift toward what's been called the visual social network. Next, I'll explain what Pinterest is and how it works. Then I'll move on to some creative things that people have done with Pinterest. Also some creative things that have been done in, with Pinterest in education. And finally, some copyright issues surrounding Pinterest. So first I would like to provide some context on it. I'm going to talk about the rise of the visual social network. This is something that's happened in the past two years. So the past two years have been rather unique in the world of social media because of the launch of two important new social networks. First we have Pinterest, and then we also have Instagram. Instagram is a free photo sharing app for iOS and Android devices. And it's really an easy way for users to take the photos that they have on their phone or portable device and share them with the world. A great thing about Instagram is that it has a variety of built-in filters to make your photos look really neat. So instead of having to upload a photo to a PC and run it through Photoshop, you can simply choose a filter in Instagram and then quickly share it with the world. Instagram is very popular. There were 80 million users as of August 2012, and it was actually purchased by Facebook for $1 billion in April of 2012. And here's just a picture of Instagram. Uh, so within the Instagram app, you can browse photos that uh, users have posted. Here's an example of a photo that somebody's posted. Obviously, it's gone through a filter in Instagram. And because Instagram is a, a, a social network, you can also follow users. You can like their, uh, their photos and many other things that you would see in social networks such as Facebook or Twitter. Now, Pinterest is a virtual pin board, and I'm going to elaborate on this a bit more later. Uh, the claim to fame for Pinterest is that the website reached 10 million unique users a month faster than any other website before it. It is estimated to be the third most popular social network behind Facebook and Twitter, and it has also been valued at over $1.5 billion. Something else that's happened in the past two years uh, is that Facebook and Twitter have also become more visual. In particular, in June 2011, Twitter introduced an integrated photo sharing service. So in the past, in order for people to post pictures to Twitter, they would need to host that picture somewhere. Uh, typically this was done through a third-party service such as TwitPic. What TwitPic did is it would host your photo and also give you a shortened URL that you could put into your tweet. Now, because uh, uh, Twitter introduced this photo sharing service right within the Twitter interface, TwitPic was really made obsolete. Uh, Facebook also made some changes. In December 2011, the Facebook timeline was introduced. It was introduced in December, and in March of 2012, it was imposed on all Facebook users. And what the Facebook timeline does is it introduces a, a type of visual storytelling. So you can have the whole story of your life on Facebook um, accentuated by pictures throughout. Something else that happened in December 2011 is that the profile pictures on Facebook became 170% larger. So now that we've set some context for the visual social network, I'm going to spend some time talking about Pinterest in particular. So as I mentioned before, Pinterest is a virtual pin board. So what does this actually mean? Well, according to the people at Pinterest, it means that you can organize and share the things that you love. And on Pinterest, the things that you love take the form of pins, which are actually images or videos from YouTube or Vimeo that you find online. So here is an example of what Pinterest looks like. 
So if you were to sign on to the Pinterest site right now, you would see something similar to this. So essentially what we're looking at is a sample of some of the most recent pictures that were posted onto Pinterest. And a few weeks ago, I spent an afternoon just browsing Pinterest, and I was actually able to categorize most of these photos into four different types. First, we had uh, pins that had to do with food, so in particular, recipes. Next, we had crafts. There are also lots of photos, uh, or sorry, pins about animals on Pinterest. And finally, fashion is also a big part of Pinterest. Now, typically on Pinterest, individual pins are organized into subject-specific boards. So in this example, we're seeing a screenshot of a Pinterest account that I created for the purposes of this presentation. And as you can see, I have four different pin boards. I have one called Library Stuff, another called Funny, Cool Infographics, and Cool Stuff. So when I go to pin an item onto Pinterest, I can, I can choose which one of these four boards to pin that item to. Either that, or I can create a brand new board. Now, anything that you pin onto Pinterest is public, publicly accessible. So currently, there's no such thing as a private pin or a private pin board. Consequently, there are many different ways that other Pinterest users can come across your pins. One way is via one of the featured pin boards. So on the main Pinterest site, uh, at the top of the screen in the middle, there is an option that says Categories. If you click on this option, uh, a drop-down menu will appear with many different subjects. So for example, we have architecture, uh, gardening, tattoos, etc. So it is quite possible that something that you have pinned will be featured on one of these uh, category boards for other Pinterest users to find. Another way Pinterest users can find your pins is by following your account. So in this example, I'm following an account called Dogs Galore, which means I can keep track of all of the new pins that this person, or this account rather, uh, puts onto Pinterest. Also, uh, people can find your pins by using the built-in search feature in Pinterest. So on Pinterest, in the top left-hand corner, there is a search box where people can type in whatever keywords they like. So in this example, I did a search for medicine hat, and clearly people are posting pictures of horses that have to do with medicine hat. Now, when you conduct a search in Pinterest, uh, the first set of search results that you will see are specific pins that have to do with your keywords. However, you can also search for entire pin boards related to your keywords, or also people related to your keywords. Next, I'll talk about how to actually use Pinterest. The first thing that I'll mention is that anyone can view pins on Pinterest without an account. So what that means is that uh, any internet user can browse the category pages that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can also search for pins, boards, and people. And you can also share individual pins via Facebook or Twitter, all without a Pinterest account. That being said, by signing up for a free account, you gain the ability to pin your own items and also engage with the Pinterest community. Now, in order to pin items on Pinterest, there are actually a few different ways you can go about doing this. Probably uh, the easiest way is to find something on Pinterest that somebody else has pinned and repin it yourself. So whenever you're looking at a pin on Pinterest, all you need to do is hover your cursor over that pin and a repin button will appear. By clicking on that repin button, a new window will open up just like this. And basically you're being asked to choose which one of your pin boards to pin this item to. And also if you wish, you can add a comment uh, for that pin. And then it's just a matter of clicking pin it and you're done. Another way you can pin items on Pinterest is by uploading an image from your computer. So within the Pinterest interface, there is an upload button. And when you click on that button, a new window opens up. And again, it's just a matter of choosing uh, the relevant file from your computer, selecting which pin board you want to pin that uh, image onto, and then if you wish, adding a comment. Something else you can do is pin items using one of the Pinterest buttons that you might find uh, anywhere on the web. 
So typically, uh, these Pinterest buttons might be contained within a social media bar, which will contain options for Facebook, Twitter, and other social media services. Uh, sometimes, however, the Pinterest button might be right next to a photo or some kind of other image on a web page. So by clicking on that Pinterest button, you have the option of pinning that image directly. Something else you can do, and I think this is pretty neat, you can install a Pinterest bookmark for your web browser. So what this means is that when you're looking at a web page through your web browser, but there is no option, there is no Pinterest button to pin an image, you can simply uh, navigate to your bookmarks folder and click the Pinterest bookmark. And what will happen is that a new window will pop up and all the images from that web page will be splayed out in front of you in a grid. So from there, it's just a matter of choosing which image you want to pin and clicking the Pin It button. Now, there are also uh, Pinterest apps for iOS and Android devices. The app for iPad in particular is quite slick. Uh, in addition to letting you navigate the Pinterest website, it has a, a full-featured web browser built in. And that web browser contains the Pin It button right next to the address bar. So as I previously mentioned with the uh, Pinterest bookmark, this Pin It button works the same way. So by clicking on the Pin It button in that uh, iPad app, all the images from the web page will be uh, laid out in front of you, and you can simply click on the one that you wish to repin. And as I mentioned before, when you sign up for a Pinterest account, you also gain the ability to engage with the Pinterest community. And in Pinterest, you do that by leaving comments on other people's pins and vice versa. Currently, there's no way to send direct messages to other Pinterest users, uh, which is kind of nice because it keeps your commitment to Pinterest uh, quite minimal in terms of interacting with other people. You, you can get in there and get out pretty quickly. Okay, some uh, creative things that people have done with Pinterest. First of all, we have a Pinterest job posting. By that I mean uh, not a job posting work at Pinterest, but job postings that companies uh, put onto Pinterest. So right here, uh, we have an example of a job posting from a company called Work Club. Uh, Work Club is an advertising agency based in the UK, and they are currently looking for a new creative director. So rather than writing up a text-based job posting and mounting it on their website, they've actually put all the requirements on Pinterest. So what I mean by that is they've created a pin board, and on that pin board, they have pinned uh, pictures from classic movies. Each picture represents a characteristic that this company would like the potential creative director to have. Something else that people have done with Pinterest uh, is actually launch an entire website uh, on Pinterest. So an example of this is another advertising agency called Hauler. They're based in Sydney, Australia and they actually mounted their entire website on Pinterest. So how they did this is they created a Pinterest account for the company, and within that account, they created individual pin boards, each pin board representing one section that you would see within the site. Within each pin board, they had individual pins. Each pin would have a picture and a comment, and each individual pin would rep represent the content on the website. So a very cool idea, probably not ideal for every type of website, especially if you have lots of content, uh, because Pinterest limits your comments to 500 words, but certainly for a, an advertising agency, a very good use of Pinterest. One other neat thing that's been done is a Pinterest puzzle contest. So in this example, uh, there's a French automaker called Peugeot, and they had a puzzle contest on Pinterest. How they did this is they took a picture of one of their cars, they split it up into different pins in a panoramic style, and uh, as you can see from the picture, several of the pictures are actually missing to complete that entire picture. What they asked people to do is go onto the company's Facebook page and web page in order to find those missing images and then repin them onto Pinterest for a chance to be entered into a draw for a prize. Uh, finally, uh, another company held a lottery on Pinterest. So this was done by the British airline uh, BMI. And what they did is within their Pinterest account, they added pins, so uh, pictures, of some of their most popular destinations. Each picture contained a number in the bottom left-hand corner. And they asked people 
to go onto Pinterest and repin up to six of these pictures. After a certain date, the company drew a random number and all the users who had posted a picture associated with that specific number were entered into a draw for a prize. Next, I'll talk about some educational applications of Pinterest. So one thing that's been done with Pinterest is it has been used as a place to gather online research. So in this example, what somebody has done is they have gone on the web and found many different articles that apply to their research topic. Rather than adding these articles to a bookmark list or printing them out, they have pinned images from the articles to a board in Pinterest. Now how Pinterest works is that when you click a pinned image, you're actually automatically brought to the web page where that image is from. So in this sense, it's almost like a social bookmarking service as well. So in this example, this person has pinned many different articles and they're all in one place and easy to track down later. One additional benefit is that all of these articles can also be shared with other users because, as I mentioned earlier, everything on Pinterest is publicly accessible. Pinterest has also been used to create reading lists. So in this example, an instructor in an English course has posted a reading list. So they have taken the book covers for all the relevant titles and pinned them onto a Pinterest board to make them easily accessible for students. Pinterest is also an ideal medium to showcase student work. So artwork, sculptures, anything that you can take a photograph, um, Pinterest is a, an ideal place to share those uh, artistic works with the world. Some suggested things that you might use Pinterest for in an educational setting. It could be used to pin news stories for students to read and comment on. An instructor might add a visual Pinterest component to a class project in addition to a written component. Pinterest is a great way to connect with other instructors and share ideas. You might also want to create a research help board within Pinterest that would contain links to databases, websites, and other resources to help students with their research projects. The Pinterest search feature is a great way to find material on your subject. Uh, you can simply type in any keywords that apply to your discipline and see what is out there. Uh, you might also want to look at the education pin board. That's within the featured uh, category a menu that I mentioned earlier, and there are lots of great ideas on there as well. Something else that I'll mention just very quickly is another social network called Learnist. Now, Learnist is brand new. In fact, it's still in development. You can't make an account with them uh, yet. However, they're, they're doing something unique. They're, they've taken the Pinterest uh, concept and they've applied it directly to education. So whereas Pinterest is clearly geared more toward uh, common interest, popular uh, topics, Learnist is dedicated entirely to uh, specific academic disciplines. So this is something to keep an eye on down the road as well. Now I'm just going to uh, say a few words about copyright. Uh, as you probably noticed, Pinterest is entirely based upon sharing other people's content. And from a copyright standpoint, I think this um, raises a few interesting questions. According to the Pinterest Terms of Service, it is the user's responsibility to ensure the copyright is respected before they pin anything onto the website. Now, is this actually being done? It's hard to say. I would probably say that it's not. I think the saving grace for Pinterest is that all images are directly linked to the original source material. So as I mentioned before, by clicking on an image, you'll be transported to the website uh, where that image comes from. That being said, um, copyright holders can still request that Pinterest remove their content. So if you do pin something onto Pinterest, there is of course a possibility that the intellectual property owner might not like that and may uh, ask Pinterest to remove that content. Something else that Pinterest has put in place to address copyright concerns is a no pin code. Now this is a special HTML tag that people can put onto their websites and by adding this tag it removes the ability for people to pin any images on that particular page. 
And just to conclude the presentation, uh, Pinterest is still a relatively new social network. It's less than two years old. And there is still a lot of room for growth and development. One interesting thing about Pinterest is that currently the majority of users are female. Um, and it's unclear why specifically that may be. One theory is that up until a few weeks ago, Pinterest was an invite-only service. So you, were, you needed to know somebody with a Pinterest account uh, in order to um, get onto Pinterest yourself. Whether that explains why there are more female users than male, it's uh, difficult to say. That being said, I would like to thank you for watching this presentation. And if you have any questions about Pinterest, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me at the library. Thank you.